Welcome everyone. Today we're going to show you about Volumil Solids and why you don't have it. I see a lot of shops have the 2D wireframe which comes with Gibbs automatically with a milling package but not Volumil Solids and wondering why you don't. This is something that every shop should have. I'm going to show you four parts today. This is version 14.0.21 and I think this will convince you why you should have volume mill solids. Now this is a, uh, a mold here and uh, we're going to show you why. So we're going to bring up uh, just a standard half inch tool. Let me bring it over so you can see it. Just a standard half inch tool. Uh, volume mill wireframe and solids is just made to rough. It's not made to finish parts. It's just made to rough parts. So we're going to bring up our volume mill uh, process here. And I'm going to put in my depth here. I'm going to say, of course, my maximum depth is going to be minus 0.7. I'm going to leave, this is mainly for wireframe stuff here, minimum toolpath 0.04, that's pretty standard, It'll, it should put in uh, some of the correct values for you already. Positioning on the floor, uh, 10 thou off the floor when it uh, moves over, high feed rates over. We're going to use stock, but what's nice in volume mill, 2D and solids, is technology expert. So I'm going to click on this, and here I'm machining low silicon aluminum. 40 cat 40 taper my maximum rpm spindle is 15,000 my max feed rate is 1500 and then it asks you how are you holding this part you really holding it well kind of loose or in between i usually start out in between and cut aggressiveness do you want to be really aggressive or kind of conservative i usually kind of lean towards the conservative side to make sure everything's cutting good then uh, maybe i'll do the toolpath again for aggressive now over on here it has the tool information and you can say what kind of tool holder do you want to use. Now I would not recommend using an end mill holder. Uh, they're okay but an end mill holder is of course going to force the end mill uh, off to one side slightly, ever so slightly, but uh, your tool will not be balanced for one thing. Uh, TG collets, kind of okay. ER collet, I would not use an ER collet on high speed milling like this. Uh, they have a tendency to suck the tool out pretty easily. Uh, hydraulic chuck, milling chuck, or shrink fit are both three excellent choices. I'm just going to choose hydraulic chuck. Okay, tool coating, you can put uncoated, coated, whatever you'd like here. And I'm going to do check all, make sure they're all checked, and apply all, or apply checked. Apply all is going to move it over to our process page. Here you can see 15,000 RPM, it recommends 500 inches a minute feed rate, cut width of 150 thou. Usually I do side milling only. I just like to uh, climb mill for the most part and not conventional mill. But you have a lot of choices here. Now, in high speed machining, you want to take uh, as deep a cut as you can with the tool. Uh, back in the 90s and early 2000s, High speed machining meant uh, going really fast but only using a small part of the end mill. The problem with that is you wear the end mill out on the end. So we want to use as much as we can up the flutes and uh, use that wear along the, fl the whole flutes of the, the tool. So I'm going to say uh, maximum one inch on that tool. Now you're saying, okay, well this is the mold part. It's going to leave gigantic steps in here for when I finish. Well, not the case. Press on the solids tab. And you can say my desired step is one inch, but wall cleanup, I'm going to say 50 thou there, so that you'll see the toolpath here. So when we run the toolpath, I have it on, on here already, and we're going to simulate this. I'll slow it down just a bit. We need to start out with some stock first, so let me stop that and I'll put the stock back in. Okay, here we go. And you can see volume mill does not plunge the tool into the part, taking the whole width of the tool and probably snapping the tool or clogging it up. Uh, most of the time this will be maybe a five flute, six flute end mill, and it will pull the chips out even on aluminum. So I'll speed this up a little bit. But you can see here it's not... Um, 
one inch this depth, but it's taking it as close as it can to the depth. Uh, one thing I did on the process here is I said hit flats. So it's going to modify the depth to hit the flats of the part. So let me speed this up a little bit. So I can kind of see it there. You can see it's taking as much material as it can, the depth it can. Now watch when it goes around these parts, these little islands here, basically. Notice it's coming up that 50 thou and cleaning them up. And notice it automatically helixes down into the part. As you can see, it's coming up. And as you can see here, we have a nice uh, part here. We probably need to go a little bit deeper here because this cavity is a little deeper. So let's just change some of the values in here. Let's just say minus one and a half. Desired step, we'll put that at a yeah, half inch will be just fine. It takes about uh, 20 seconds to uh, do the tool path again. You can see it down here at the bottom of the screen. You can always open this up to see the progression. Okay, let's render this again, a little faster this time. You can see it's taking a pretty heavy cut there. And you can see now it's stepping up to clean up those walls. And you can see when it's done roughing, let's turn on edges there. You might be able to see a little bit better. You can see it looks really good for finishing passes with our ball end mill or a semi-finish with a ball end mill then finish. But you don't have any heavy steps there to uh, break the tool. So what's nice about the volume mill is, yeah, you want to take as deep a cut as you can, but let it come up and clean up those uh, sides there so you can finish it. Now if you wanted to, uh, say, uh, see it's going in these holes a little bit here, which is fine, but maybe you want to not have it even cut into those holes, especially when you come back to surface that. So what I'm going to do is put this in the body bag, gonna duplicate it, turn on face selection, bring up my solids palette, and my heel menu. I'm going to click inside the hole here. And we'll just try that one right there, and that's healed up. This one over here, that's healed up. Now we could run the toolpath again, and it will ignore even those holes. Okay, let's go on to the second part. Okay, here's our second part, another 3D kind of mold. Let's open up the process We're using the same type of tool, half inch tool. I'm going down a little more than an inch because uh, that's about to this surface right here. And this time I want to do a 3 8 step here. And I'm going to go to the solids palette and say, well, do a 3 8 step as much as you can to uh, make the wear on the tool evenly and then kind of wall clean up at 50 thou steps. So once we do that one, you can see the tool path there. Let's run the rendering. And by hitting flats, it's going to hit the flat first. So you can see pretty large steps there. And again, you can see it climbing up the wall and cleaning up. So very nice roughing process there, ready to finish with your ball end mills. Okay, let's go on to the third part. Okay, here's our third part here. This is a pretty big part, 12 inches by about 12 inches. Uh, pretty thick part as well. Using the three quarter inch end mill, gonna go down five inches, 
inch and a half desired step there. And again, I'm going to go to the Solids tab and click on Wall Cleanup eighth of an inch. So I'm going to come up now eighth of an inch to kind of clean that up a little bit. So let's look at the tool path here. And let's do the rendering. So pretty aggressive depth of cut. Notice it's going to come up there that eighth of an inch and clean up. And of course it's going to do a helix in the hole. And you can see it looks pretty good. Now you might say, well, I don't want even the tool to even go down in these two cavities here. And that's fine. We're going to heal them up here. So let me turn off the rendering. And then we'll show you how to heal them up. I'm going to turn off cam for a moment so it cleans it up a little bit. And now we'll show you how to clean these uh, surfaces up here. First, I've always put it in the body bag and duplicate it. So it comes back out on our screen. So I always have the original in the body bag there. That way I can always refer back to it. Again, I'm going to bring up my solid modeling. Click up my heel. Of course, solids palette here and unstitch solid right there and I'm gonna do create plug so maybe I want to come back with a make a, uh, a sinker and come down here and clean these up uh, or you could use it as a EDM for wire so I'm gonna click on this one that says actually create plug once you heal it up so I'm gonna click inside here make sure you're on face selection click on one face right click go down to where it says select tangent faces you can see everything in there selected click on do it and let's do this section in here I'm just going to click on one side right click go to select select wall faces you see it selected everything in there do it if I put this part in the body bag you see it's nice and healed up now I have my two plugs so I can use this if I'm going to make electrode for a sinker or use it of my second op with a EDM so I'm going to bring this back and redo this operation. Let's close everything out. Turn back my cam on here. Let's go back to the operation. Let's make sure we got the right one because this one grabbed our original one because that's what we were using. So just grab the full and we're going to click on redo. You can see the time down here clicking away. This is real time. I didn't speed it up. So volume mill wire and solids creates a toolpath pretty fast. And there we have our toolpath. So let's do Operation Sim again. You can see it's climbing up the walls again to give us that eighth of an inch that we asked for. And there we have a very nice part ready to surface now. But you're saying, well, most of my parts aren't mold parts. They're 2D, 3D parts with cavities in that. Well, that's fine. Our uh, last part, we're going to show you how to do it with a cavity. So let's bring in that part. Actually, I have one more part I want to show you before we do just the pocketing. Uh, this is a pretty simple part here. It has some basic surfacing on here. Uh, be a little hard to do. Uh, just in wireframe geometry stuff, but uh, if this is a typical part you kind of do, then uh, let's run the toolpath on that. Did the same thing with there with this one. You do the 3D volume mill, well, volume mill solids, and you can go to Technology Expert if you'd like and uh, look at your feeds and speeds there. And you can see it's updated at uh, 112 thou width. Uh, 375 uh, feed rate and our solids we're going to leave uh, 10,000 stock 
And then I'm just going to come back with a ball end mill and clean it up. So let's render this one. You can see we're taking heavy cuts to put that wear on the flutes and then coming up just to clean up the edges. So we have a nice uniform uh, amount of stock left on the steps. And here we have just our ball end mill doing a quick run. And if we want we can clean up those uh, radiuses as well and you have a finished part there. Okay, our last part is going to be the one with pockets, so let's bring that one up. Okay, here's our last part, simple uh, 2D stuff. This uh, pocket in this part here are different uh, depths, as you can see. So on my, let me bring up my process here. I told it I want to go 812 maximum depth, which is basically to this step down here. And I want to do it, of course, one inch as much as possible. I mean, as deep as it'll go. Uh, stock, uh, we're going to leave uh, 10,000 stock on there. And uh, I want to clean up, uh, wall clean up at 50,000 because there is, uh, on, at least on the other part, there's a taper in there. But if you look at the toolpath here, you can see these are all spiraling down in automatically. You don't have to tell it to do that. You just tell it to do a helix. So we're going to click on this. Just click on the whole part. And I think this takes about 20 seconds to run. So let's do a redo. And you can see the time down here. So about 22 seconds. Not bad. Okay, let's, uh, let's do the other one. Basically the same thing, going three quarter deep as much as we can, leaving some material. I'm just going to click redo on that. You can see the time down here. and about 14 seconds. So you can see by hitting flats it's going to go down, it's going to adjust the Z till it gets to the flat so you're not going to have it's not going to go down a half inch at a time and leave a big gap there. It's going to always hit the flats there if you tell it to hit the flats and you can of course plunge type helix or ramp or do not plunge. Uh, if you had a drill you could actually uh, pre-drill holes in there and have it go into the hole and start cutting it out. So if you didn't want a helix you could do that as well. So the nice thing about uh, volume mill as well as it does not use any G0s in your G-code output because G0s are unpredictable. G0s go as fast as the machine will go in X and Y till it gets to from point A to point B which is not always a straight line. So when you're doing um, cavities with islands and that you may clip the islands or run into it and bust your tool and wreck your machine. So that's why uh, volume mill uses a G1 with a high feed rate. That's your high feed of your machine like maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred or greater than that to move from point A to point B so it knows where all the material is to avoid that so volume mill uh, works extremely well um, in doing your parts. In order to get volume mill solids, you have to have, of course, volume mill 2D, which is standard with Gibbs, and you have to have at least the 2.5D solids milling package in Gibbs. If you have the full 3D package, that includes the 2.5D already. Um, if you have just solids import, you could add the 2.5D solids and volume uh, mill solids as well. So you can see the advantage of having. Uh, volume mill solids and uh, thanks for watching.